Alright, so the first thing you need to be a landscape painter is an interest in the outside. Uh, a passion to get up early, stay up late. You don't mind bugs, rain, heat, cold. Second thing you need is a place to paint, something interesting to look at. We found that here. We're out at Cedar Creek Reservoir. And then you need some equipment. And so I've got a chair, obviously I'm sitting on. And here I've got my French easel. Any easel will do. An easel is just a support for a painting. French easel um, just has some compartments in it that hold paint. So the reason why I have a French easel is to hold the painting vertical. So I can paint on it. That's for oil painting or acrylics. Of course, if I was doing watercolor, I'd want to have a board hold in my lap and hold the paint, painting the paper flat. All right, so this is called plein air oil painting, French term. Painting outside, fresh air. So we need to have something to paint on, support. And so what I've got here is a, is a bunch of uh, wooden panels. This is birch plywood, cabinet grade plywood. It's very smooth. And it has a couple layers of acrylic gesso on it, tinted. So it's not really harsh white. It's tinted with a little bit of uh, burnt umber in various sizes. We're just going to do a very small oil painting this morning. We can do whatever size we want. So now I'm going to start getting my palette set up. And the palette is your instrument. If you're a musician and you're going to play the piano, you don't rearrange the keys every time you paint. You the keys are, every time you play, the keys are all in the same place across the, across the keyboard. So I'm going to keep my paint in the same place too, so I know where it is. So three primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. And I'm putting out two versions of each one. I'm putting out a, for the blues, I'm putting out a cool blue, which is a cerulean blue, cooler like icy, a warmer blue, which is ultramarine blue, which in this case would be a little bit more purpley. I'm putting out a warm red, very orangey bright red, and a cool red. And I'm going to put out a cool yellow, a lemon yellow, and a warmer yellow. So I've got my easel, I've got my panel that I'm going to paint on, I've got my palette set up here, I've got palette knives to scrape and mix with. Just about ready to go. That's one thing I'm going to need are some brushes. These are called filberts. They're flat with rounded edges and they're either a mix of natural fibers, sable, it's very common, or synthetics. All right, so I'm going to make a real quick sketch here of what I'm looking at, just to make sure I've got it framed and placed well on my, uh, my panel. So just a very quick general dimensions of the panel here, and I'm looking at some cranes, and there's a horizon line out there, some cranes going up, and a bridge, maybe a few clouds up here, and a water ripple pattern. That's all I need. It was very, very quick. Very simple landscape, very ele elemental. We've got a big sky to work with. We've got a very empty foreground here of the lake surface. And then the horizon line in the middle where the, everything meets. You've got an island and cranes and things like that, bridges. So very, very simple. But those are the three big elements of any landscape painting. The sky, the foreground, the earth and the horizon line where the two meet. 
All right, so I'm going to get started here. I'm going to take a little burnt sienna, which is a nice transparent earth tone. Bridge coming out. It's generally a wave pattern. It sort of looks like that. And some sky and clouds up here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start layering a little bit of paint on top of this just to get a sense of where I'm going with this. There's some trees out there that are green. Green. I'm going to start layering in some background pigments. This is a little bit counterintuitive. I like painting over magenta, especially in skies. That uh, gives the sky a nice high key prismatic glowing look to it. colors here to work with. Transparent washes, sort of similar to what you do with a watercolor. You'll notice I'm also redrawing over and over some of the things I've originally drawn, like the uh, cranes. So, I'm going to start adding some more opaque paint. This is all done in very transparent paint, but we want to start building up some of the lights. I'll add some white. sort of a foundation for what I want to do. Think of that as an underpainting. Thinking about lights and darks. The other fun thing about painting outside now is we have different sun. The clouds just moved. And so that is another part of the deal, is chasing the sun and responding to different conditions. The color on the lake is really complex because there's a lot going on there. I've got the sky color reflected in the lake, I've got wave patterns on the lake, I've got greens, blues, and so what we're going to try and do is capture a lot of that. And again, I'm going to build it up and then try and pick out where I wanted to find. So I've got some blues and violet colors underneath. I've just put some greens on top of that go back here in a minute and layer some more colors on there. And I think I need to lighten it up. I like the green, but the green really is not reflecting the sky yet. So I'm going to bring some of that sky color in.
And as I layer in the sky color on top of the green for the lake, I'm going to keep in mind the wave pattern. It sort of radiates out from my left. Remember, painting is the art of suggestion. We're not necessarily going to capture every wave, but we're going to paint it in such a way that it suggests waves. And I'm going to start using a little bit of perspective here because as we get closer to us, the wave pattern becomes more noticeable and the value changes between the reflected sky color on the wave and the dark green of the water itself, those values start to become more noticeable. So I want to allude to that as I come forward in the landscape and just leave little bits, a little more green showing through. All right, so I have most of the elements in place here. And what I'm going to do now is sort of make some decisions about what do I want to emphasize and what do I want to de-emphasize. Is no right and wrong here. I think I want to pull out just a little bit of highlight, a little more orange, yellowy greens on some of these trees to bring them out a little bit more. Okay. Sometimes the simplest paintings are the most demanding. It's a very simple painting, so I want to make sure highlighting and drawing attention to some of the forms out there. So the supports of the bridge, make sure we're alluding to those. Showing that that is the structure. And then add some more texture. And I'll say it's looking like it's getting there. I'm just going to put my initials in it. question is, when is the painting done? And I encourage students to paint outside fairly quickly because you only have about maybe 20 minutes of consistent light and then after that you're just chasing the light because it's constantly moving and changing. And so uh, I say a painting is done when you've captured a sense of light and space and, and uh, and realize you're not just painting objects out there, you're painting the volume of air that's illuminated by the sun and all the water reflecting around between you and what it is you're looking at. And when you've captured that volume of space, the illuminated space between you and what you're looking at, I think you've gone fairly far down the road in terms of capturing really a sense of that space and that's what being a landscape painter in my view is all about. You're not trying to reproduce nature, you're trying to capture some quality of nature. And so we've done that with this little painting and I hope that uh, that shows you a little bit about what uh, oil painting outside, plein air oil painting is all about. <laughs>